Imagine a situation where two vectors come face to face, combining their properties to create an entirely new vector. So the vector product or the cross product between two vectors A and B that are five degrees apart is written as A cross B and the result of this operation is a third vector C that equals AB sine phi. So the resultant vector C is a vector that is perpendicular to both the vectors A and B. And here what is important to remember is that phi is the smaller of the two possible angles that is phi or 360 minus phi because sine phi is not equal to sine 360 minus phi. Now you might think that vector perpendicular to A and B could be in this direction or it could be in this direction as well. So to determine the correct direction, this is what you do. Put your right hand along vector A, which is the first vector appearing in A cross B like this. That is the base of the hand aligns with vector A and the palm of your hand faces vector B. Then you sweep your hand from vector A towards vector B like this. Then the direction of the thumb is the correct direction of the resultant vector C. Now let us say you are asked to find B cross A instead of A cross B. Well, you can write it as B A sin phi and you can see the magnitude of B cross A is the same as the magnitude of A cross B. But let us see if the direction of the resultant vector C is also the same. So using the same method we discussed earlier, that is we sweep our right hand from vector B because that is the first vector appearing in this expression towards vector A. And when you do this, you see that the resultant vector C dash is pointing downwards. That is, it is pointing opposite to the direction of vector C. So we can say that C dash is equal to minus of vector C, which then would mean B cross A is equal to minus of A cross B. So if someone told you that A cross B is 2 Newton meter and asked you what would be B cross A, you can quickly say it will be minus 2 Newton meter perpendicular to vector A and B or the plane of vector A and B. Now we can also find cross product if the vectors are given in i, j, k notation. So A cross B can then be written as A x i plus A y j plus A z k cross B x i plus B y j plus B z k. And if you cross each component of vector A to each component of vector B, the way you would do in usual algebra, what you get is AXI cross BXI plus BYJ plus BZK plus AYJ cross BXI plus BYJ plus BZK plus AZK cross BXI plus BYJ plus BZK. And when you open up the brackets and simplify it, what you get is this. And we can simplify this by remembering that the cross product between terms that have i crossed with i or j crossed with j or k with k will yield a zero value simply because if you cross i with i then i being parallel to i will have zero angle between them and hence the sign of that would turn out to be zero. So i cross i is equal to j cross j is equal to k cross k is equal to zero. And therefore, these terms would vanish. On the other hand, cross product where you have i cross with j or i crossed with k, etc., you will get a result like this. As an example, axi cross byj would equal axby into i cross j, which equals axby into vector k. And remembering that cross product of i and j would be a vector perpendicular to i and j 
and that you know would be vector k. So i cross j is equal to j cross i is equal to k and j cross k is equal to minus k cross j is equal to i and k cross i is equal to minus i cross k is equal to j. So finally what we get is a cross b is equal to a y b z minus b y a z times vector i plus a z b x minus b z a x times j plus a x b y minus b x a y times k. And I would suggest that you just memorize this formula that will save you a lot of time when you solve problems. Now we can also do some interesting geometrical interpretation of the magnitude of a cross product. So what you can see is b sin phi is the magnitude of component of vector b that is perpendicular to the direction of vector a. And if you multiply this, that is b sin phi with magnitude of vector a, what you get is this. That is also the magnitude of a cross b or this expression is nothing but a cross b. And you can also see that this product is also the expression for the area of a parallelogram enclosed by the two vectors because area of a parallelogram is nothing but its base multiplied by the height. So this is often called the parallelogram law of cross products which states that the area enclosed by two vectors is equal to the magnitude of the cross product of two vectors. In other words, the magnitude of the resultant vector is equal to the area of the parallelogram enclosed by the two vectors whose cross product is being calculated. So we can write this as magnitude of A cross B or the absolute value of A cross B is equal to the area of the parallelogram is equal to AB sine phi. So let us attempt a problem that will bring more clarity to the topic and also expose us to the idea of using cross products in a real life situation. So most of us have opened a nut with a wrench at some point of time or I would think so and from our experience we can say that more the distance between the nut and the part of the wrench you apply the force easier it is to open. Also we always apply the force like this that is 90 degrees to the wrench and not like this and when we do this that is when we apply 90 degrees the nut opens quite comfortably. Well in physics we say that you are applying torque to the nut or you are applying a turning force to the nut and the magnitude of the torque or the turning force is given as the cross product of R and F where R is the radial distance of the force F from the center of the nut and here the radial distance is treated as a vector pointing outwards from the center of the nut which is the origin. So you could say the physical vector quantity that makes a nut turn is called torque denoted by the simple tau and it is obvious from the formula that more the value of F or more the value of R more the turning force or torque you get and this is exactly what we experience when we open a nut. Now what is not so obvious is that the direction of torque is perpendicular to both the vectors R and F. So while the twisting force is twisting the nut like this, in vector language we say the direction of this twisting force or torque is perpendicular to both these vectors that is R and F and the direction of the torque can be found using the right hand rule and we can see that it points in the upward direction here. Okay, now we come to the actual question. So what we have here is a wrench being used to open a nut and the magnitude of force is 20 newtons and acts at an angle of 40 degrees to the radial vector r that is 0.25 meters in length and the question is 
what is the magnitude of torque so we know that magnitude of torque is equal to r cross f which equals magnitude of r times f times the sine of the angle between the two vectors so this equals 0.25 meters into 20 newtons into sine of 40 which equals 3.21 newton meter and to find the direction of torque we use the right hand rule and we find that the direction is perpendicular to r and f in the upward direction the next question is what is the torque if the angle is increased to 45 degrees well it would be 0 0.25 meters into 20 newtons into sine of 45 which would equal 3.53 newtons which is more than when the angle was 40 degrees and if you keep increasing the angle the torque will keep increasing till the angle becomes 90 degrees in which case sine 90 becomes 1 so when the force is perpendicular to vector r the torque is 0 0.25 meters into 20 newtons into sine of 90 which equals 5 newton meter and this is exactly what we discussed earlier that you get the maximum turning force or mechanical advantage when the angle between the radial vector r and the force is 90 degrees so you see cross product is a very important topic in physics but if you really want to have in-depth understanding of vectors i would suggest you head over to this playlist and like always if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and see you in the next video